and get the highest payout across the three national TAB totes for all winning bets on Australian gallops. And we'll pay out on both winners if your horse loses in a protest during any Australian gallop or harness. Support your local Winners Bet. Go to winnersbet.com.au now. Gamble responsibly. The Night Train is brought to you by St Andrews Hotel, 128 Nicholson Street, Fitzroy. Beautifully crafted, cosy and intimate spaces for your drinking and dining experiences. Welcome back to the Night Train, where we'll be discussing everything and anything Melbourne Knights. Once again, I'm your host, Anthony Zovac, and I'm joined again by my good friend, Josh Parrish. Josh, good evening, mate. Good evening. It's an eventful week in uh, in the world of football and uh, the Croatian community, I'm hearing, but yeah. uh, we'll try and steer clear of uh, any any gardening implements. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> definitely leave the mower blades to gyms, I suppose. Um, but definitely a massive weekend of NPL football. A few big results. Yeah. And plenty to talk about on tonight's show. As always, we'll give a quick shout out to our sponsors, IND Group, Living Gems Lifestyle Resorts, the Melbourne Croatia Soccer Club, the Australian Croatian Clubs of Melbourne and Geelong, Adcon Group, Evolve Reinforcement, Empire Global. And once again, thank you to Tony Voyage down at the pump at the St Andrews Hotel formerly the Pump House for his ongoing sponsorship of the show. It's very much appreciated. And tonight we'll be as always, we'll be doing a quick recap of our juniors, women's, te- women's team's results, the seniors' result from Friday night, we'll go around the grounds and do a bit of a preview to our upcoming Friday night clash with Dandenong City. Absolutely massive weekend of football, Josh. Yeah, huge, starting with the, the Crow Derby, which we like to see. And uh, Knights have the unfortunate habit of playing sides just as they come into form, and I think that might be the same pattern repeating itself for Friday night. Yeah, it, um, it's a bit frustrating <laughs> as a Knights fan, to be honest, because normally, you, you know, you're used to the, that mid-season transfer window. You know, teams can change up normally around round 13, 14, 15, 16. You know, having the transfer window in round 8 really is going to be a um, bit of a point of difference in the league going forward, I think, Josh. Yeah, it's a huge turning point for a lot of clubs, especially those in the the lower half of the table that are looking to retool. And we've seen uh, young Marco Delic go across to uh, Danny Nong City and mark his debut with a goal. Not a bad goal either. Spectacular as well. Uh, it was almost the same goal that he scored uh, for Hume City in uh, in one of the games earlier this season. Yeah, he's that's the second time. And it's nearly the exact same thing. Like yeah. If you look at the mirror, it's basically a mirror image goal for goal. I think it was against Danny Nong City oh, he scored that. It might that. have been, It yeah. was, actually. Yeah. I should remember because I called it. <laughs> and uh, that he just cutting inside from the left, curling into the top corner. Now he's done it again against South Melbourne. And uh, the Knights will have to be on their guard and make sure he doesn't get uh, any space on that right foot when he comes inside. Definitely not. But we'll kick things off with a quick recap of our juniors' results. Um, the under 12, under 12 boys with a 2-1 loss to Bringbank. Under the other under 12 team had a boy. The under 13 A's with a loss to Green Gully, and in the MPL teams, the under 14s with a 4-0 loss to Melbourne Victory. The under 15s with a 1-0 loss to Bendigo. The under 16s had a boy, and the under 17s with a 4-0 win over Bringbank and. Con- in that game, congratulations to uh, young Jason Rastocic, his first game back from a little bit of a back surgery. Heard he scored a goal and assisted, so good on the young fellow in his first game back. Back surgery. Yeah. That's never fun. Never fun, especially at that age. God, 
I hope I never have to get back surgery. Oh, me neither. But, you know, being being Croatian working in trades, you end up with a pretty bad back pretty quick. So yeah. I reckon you might be on the cards for me, Josh. Yeah. I've, I've seen you slowly hunch further and further. <laughs> and, uh, you know, with each win, he's, he perks up and the posture gets better. And then when the Knights don't pick up three points, he comes yeah, in. Yeah, well, it seems like every time we get a bit of an average result, Josh, you drop this table a bit further down. It's going to be touching my kneecap soon, mate. <laughs> <laughs> it's flying the table at half mast. <laughs> That's it. The nice drop points. Yeah, unfortunately, yes. Uh, the Mini Roos kicked off their season this weekend. The under eights with a 6 2 loss to Sydenham Park. The under tens, Ivan's team with a 3 2 win over Gisborne. The under tens, jo- Jack's team with a 12 1 win over West Point. So well done on an emphatic victory over the weekend for the under tens. And the under 11s with a 5 2 loss to Truganina. So some mixed results there from the juniors, but good to see the mini roos back in action. Yeah. Exciting time at that age when you're just kicking off kicking off your footballing career. That's when the, the passion is formed, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. When nothing really matters, you sort of ostensibly there to play football, but mostly there for the sausage sizzle or yeah. the chivapi. And uh, <laughs> none of your mates have done knees yet. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Some of them have done their backs, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> It. We've got Daniel Dragovic in the comments calling for the glove bot, as he said. We want glove on. We also want glove on. He's coming on at half past. He's coming on, so but, you're going to uh, tune, tune in for the for the glove bot. I don't know if we're going to get him topless, but <laughs> he definitely will be on the show, so you're going to have to hang on to see him, Daniel. Daniel, nowhere to be seen at BT Connor on the weekend, mate. I don't know where you were. Oh, well, you know, there's um, allegations flying around of a potential slam dunk on an eight-year-old cousin <laughs> Easter weekend that might have rendered him injured. That kid did his back as well. That Apparently, was, yeah. <laughs> the same kid. Same no. kid. Um, quick recap of the women's results. The under nine girls with a 6-1 win over Melton Phoenix. Well done, girls. The under 12s had a bye. Under 14s with a 3 all draw with Point Cook. And our reserves and senior women's, the reserves with a 5-1 loss. And the seniors with a 7-0 loss to Burundara. Now, I was, I was at the at the games on the weekend. Um, reserves very much improved mm. on last week. A bit unlucky not to score a couple of goals early to put them maybe in a bit of a better spot. Absolute belter of a goal to, to open up to get the girls up 1-0. Ball cut across top right-hand side of the box. First time hit over the keeper and knocked all the cobwebs out of the top corner. Absolute wonder strike, Josh. I love to see some footage. I don't know if it exists. I don't know if anyone was recording the game on the weekend. Just, I think, a bit more of a reason more of our Knights fans have to come out and support our women's reserves and seniors. I was I was at Alamein on Friday night for the MPLW game against Heidelberg and everyone was just bombing long shots. I don't know what's in the air at the moment. Sydney Allen was having cracks from halfway. <laughs> Elena Vatke scored an unbelievable goal. So, you know, they you love to see a scream, from down, downtown as well. You love and, to uh, see a scream. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so congratulations to all our teams competing over the weekend. We'll just cross... Start with the around the grounds, I suppose, Josh. Yeah, let's do it. Um, so the results over the weekend, um, the Melbourne Knights seniors will kick off with us with our two-all draw with Green Gully on Friday night, which we'll discuss a bit later in the show. Oakley Cannons with a 4-1 win over Eastern Lions. Oakley seem to really be finding their feet. Eastern Lions look like they're starting what was maybe a bit of a perceived drop-off after a good little run of form there. Yeah, look, uh, it's always going to be tough for them going away to Oakley. Yeah. I mean, that's one of the toughest fixtures in the competition. Oh, definitely. They're definitely under-resourced um, when you look at Oakley's playing budget. Mm. Um, I know arky has been calling everybody in the phone book seeing if he can get another centre back. I mm. don't know if that's born fruit just yet, but uh, certainly they've got no problems on the attacking end. Yeah, well, he's... Um they, they've always been the sort of club that will look to strengthen their squad in one or two areas during the mid-season break, and I think... Arky's phone's been going absolutely nuts the last few weeks trying to get that over the line, but we'll see if that bears fruit or not. As as mentioned previously, our this week's opponents, Dandy City, with a one nil one nil one all draw, sorry, with South Melbourne on Friday night. Pretty good result for Dandy. Again, it's another game where they've been ahead and dropped points. Yeah, they've done it so often this season. So so many times. It's it's really frustrating for Sasha, obviously, but against South Melbourne, who are leading the league, you know, you take that. They'll, they'll take it. I think for South Melbourne, it's going to be a good point going going forward. Um, again, you know, there's 
Dandy City seem to be hitting form. Hopefully, this is a bit of a sign that South are starting to drop off. But a good point for Dandy, regardless. I mean, setting on, they haven't won a game yet. <laughs> There's still four draws and five losses. But yeah. uh, well, they've been playing well, though. I, yeah. I think they've been incredibly unlucky not to get more oh, points def- on the definitely, board. Definitely, definitely. Um, Holderberg with a solid 3-1 win over Port Melbourne. Avondale with a 2-1 win over Dandenong Thunder. 95th minute goal in that one. 95th. Yeah, it was uh, Christian Theodorakopoulos with uh, his first ever senior goal, I believe, in the last possible moment of stoppage time, last kick of the game. They wow. were. Well, good on the young fellow, I suppose. Um, yeah, look, uh, they were really on their uh, on their heels. Danny Thunder have uh, strengthened, as we know, in the in the transfer window. Seem mm. to be coming into some form as well after a rough start to the year. Uh, had a couple of wins. That controversial one, the uh, the shame game against Team City that we covered last week. Yeah, well, look, I think the referees might get a bit of a bit of a mention tonight <laughs> as well. Hope maybe we need to get Hume's media people in for a week. I'll go bring the bell in. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Hume City with a massive six nil win over St Albans Dynamo over the weekend, and Bentley Greens hitting a bit of form again with a two nil win over Altona Magic and Altona Magic. Josh the. For anyone in MPL radio, the gift that keeps on giving. God, that's uh, one crisis lurching from one to the next, isn't it? How long did he last? A week? Yeah. Two? One, I think it was actually he got sacked after the Knights game. Right. That's what I heard. Or he, he was, I, I don't know, maybe they didn't, maybe he survived another week, but mm. uh, certainly not in charge anymore. Um, well, who had the over-under on five and a half training sessions? <laughs> <laughs> Jeez, look, it's not very stable employment when you're working for Altona Magic. So. Oh, look, at, at the moment, no, it's um, probably safer working in hotel quarantine. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's always uh, always a rollicking good time. It's like it's like uh, you know Zamperini or one of those Serie A presidents from back in the day. Remember the guy who used to run Palermo? Yeah. You know, so uh, who knows? Maybe uh, this guy will get rehired in a couple of weeks and have three spells during the season. We might have a oh, really rotating nice. cast. Oh, look. Hope, hopefully, for, for the sake of our radio show and everyone else's, um, let's hope Altona keep this um, bit of a magic run they're going on going because yeah. it gives us plenty to talk about. All right, guys, we're going to go to a short break. When we come back, we'll be discussing our result on Friday night and we'll be entering the or opening up the competition for this week. Are you looking to change your destiny in life? Be your own boss? Start your own business? If you are, you need people who understand your needs and are committed to helping you make it happen. At DKP & Co Chartered Accountants, we are more than just accountants. We are business advisors, taxation consultants and strategists that specialise in setting up businesses. We understand the client and give them the very best customised advice and strategies to achieve their goals. Visit our website, dkpco.com.au or give us a call today on 03 9023 9370. Fast, proactive, personal. That's DKP and Co. Chartered Accountants. Roof racks, bull bars, camping gear, fridges, car care products. Have we got your attention? With over 20,000 products available online globally, Vehicle Accessories has every vehicle accessory you can think of and more. Conveniently browse through our catalogue by specific car model or overall category. Get up to 15% off store-wide by using the code FNR at checkout. Head to vehicle-accessories.com.au. That's vehicle-accessories.com.au. At Winners Bet, we don't just enjoy a punt, we live for Winners Bet is 100% Aussie owned and we love all things racing. Up for a tote? Win and get the highest payout across the three national TAB totes for all winning bets on Australian gallops. And we'll pay out on both winners if your horse loses in a protest during any Australian gallop or harness. Support your local Winners Bet. Go to winnersbet.com.au now. Gamble responsibly. The Night Train is brought to you by St Andrews Hotel, 128 Nicholson Street, Fitzroy. Beautifully crafted, cosy and intimate spaces for your drinking and dining experiences. Welcome 
back. Welcome back, Knights fans. Now, I forgot to mention before, our under-19s had a pretty good one-all draw with Green Gully on Friday night. Nick Katsakis, the scorer, and from what I'm hearing, boys, a bit unlucky not to end up getting the result. And our under-21s coming home with a barnstorming 9-1 victory. 9-1. 9-1. Jeez. Absolutely massive. Um, new signing, Door Jock, with five goals. Five? Five <laughs> on his start. Now, look, um, I don't think there's too many better ways to start your career as a striker at a new club by pinning five. And one of them, I was watching the stream on the way to a function on the weekend, was an absolute belter from a mile outside the box. Looks like a good finisher. Congratulations to him on the five. But also Joey Chorno getting on the score sheet with one. Mark Horvanyets with one. And Oli Chakarun from left back with two. Ooh. So well done to Oli and everyone from the from the 21s. That's an absolutely massive result. That's all right. Well, uh, congratulations to the whole team. But yeah. uh, five goals is pretty special. Five goals on debut is not a bad way to start your career at the Knights. Yeah, and not a bad way to press for uh, first team selection. Definitely. Speaking of the first team... Uh, let's do a bit of a dive on our. Two, actually, let's we'll do the competition first. Give yeah, you let's a, do that. give everyone a bit more of a chance to call in. So, given that our opponents this week are Dandenong City, in the 2019 season, Melbourne Knights played Dandenong twice. It was the exact same score in both games, home and away. We're looking for an exact score. Uh, look, that doesn't happen too often. You get the exact exact same score. Both well, in both both results, one went our way, one went Dandy's way. So we're looking for an exact score now. The talk back and SMS number is on the banner underneath. But if you're listening on the on the FNR app, we, the talk back number is double nine double four double nine double nine, and the SMS number is zero four two eight nine three 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 four five. Now, we'll reiterate this again. The SMS or a comment through the Facebook Live will be accepted, but if you do call in, you will be given preference for a $50 merchandise voucher. Mm. Now, you can see some of our merch back here. It looks fantastic. The winter stuff is coming in. As I understand it, our, the jackets have come in. The hoodies are maybe three to four weeks away. Cold snap came a bit earlier than anticipated. But the merch is looking fantastic. Great way to get yourself in some club gear. For the, for the game coming up this Friday. Yeah, I mean, it's a fantastic and pretty easy question to answer. So get on the talkback line. As always, calls are, uh, are preferenced ahead of Definitely. Facebook Live comments or ahead of uh, text messages. That's uh, the hierarchy. So uh, let's go for the exact score in 2019, both games both versus Danny Nong City. Both games. And now, Josh, kick things off. I think we'll have a bit of a chat about our two old, two old draw with uh, Gully on Friday night. Game was definitely not without its drama. Goals, two goals for Knights disallowed. Um, late drama again with Gully's equaliser. Was it over the line? Was it not? Um, all in all, I think, again, a bit of a tale of two halves for, for the Knights. Um, the cha breeze coming on at half time for me changed the game. The boys will... But look, again, the goal that got called offside that was in the first five to ten minutes of the game... From where I was standing, it, Caleb looked like he was on. Good finish by him. Unfortunately, goal didn't stand. Mm. But, you know, that, that changes the game. And I think that's, you know, Luke Jago with an absolute bomb there you've just seen on, on the stream. It's crazy hit. Crazy hit. But I think for me, again, you, you can't leave a player like that on his unmarked outside the box to run onto a ball like that. I think a bit of a lapse in defending there. Maybe man got loose. That puts Gully 1-0 up. Um we do have to mention Trevor Zvetslut came off at half time with a little bit of a niggle in his knee. So best wishes to Trevor. We've seen him at the club actually tonight. He looks all right. He is training tonight. So hopefully he's okay for selection mm. this week. But given his his recent injury history on yeah. the knee, it's you don't really want to be taking chances. No. And it's good to hear that it's nothing serious because I'm sure he was fearing the worst when uh, he went down. Yeah, look, I spoke to him after the game on, on Friday night and... He was, look, it was more just a matter of caution. He's, it happened mm. about 15 to 20 minutes into the game. Um, half time, he was brought off as a precaution because obviously it's you know round nine. You don't want to be leaving him on in a round nine game and having him having that cost him for you the yeah. rest of the season. But all in all, I think it was a pretty good performance from the boys on Friday night. Breeze's goal was absolutely phenomenal. 
Yeah. A bomb and a half. I was crazy. I mean, what a finish. Like, that was, uh, you know, reminiscent of, I don't know, what a kind of famous volleys you want to call back to. Maybe Mark Bresciano. Bresciano. <laughs> De Canio. Yeah, De Canio is what I was trying to think of. Yeah. Mate. I mean, sensational. And, Absolutely and look, sensational. Even Felipe, the the young man, played started out on the wing. He was, for me, he was phenomenal on Friday night. As a, as a young bloke coming in, Gully's a tough team, especially through the middle to play against. They're pretty solid down back. He did not look out of place at all. And that finish is fabulous. The finish was turn, fabulous. the strike across the keeper, just absolutely textbook. He's got such good technique. You know, he's got no fear. Uh, I think, you know, the, the lad is in for a, a big career at the Knights if he keeps progressing like he has seemed to. And, Definitely. You know, with a few injuries around the first team squad, especially this kind of part of the season is when the depth starts to get really tested. Yeah. Having a player of his calibre coming in uh, and looking to prove himself is is a phenomenal, phenomenal asset. And, you know, you know I've been big on Felipe yeah, for a, big a, fan of his a long, long time. So uh, I haven't seen too much of him up until Friday night. Um, no, I've know. just been basing mine off an incredibly small sample size <laughs> and I'm, I've already convinced uh, yeah, that he's, well, he's going to be ba- huge. But. Based on what I saw on Friday... Uh, he, he looks like he could turn into an absolute incredible player if he keeps tracking the way he is. Uh, so, and look, again, this this is, I think, where the club has really pushed forward in terms of this season in comparison to the last couple of years, where our depth off the, off the bench and in the playing squad, I mean, you know, during the week to lose Albano and Webb coming into a game like this at Gully is, is huge. Mm-hmm. They've both been two of our better performers up to this point in the season. But Trevor, Trevor stepped up, Mo stepped up, Felipe stepped up, Caleb I think done pretty well playing playing up up front on his own, and even even Nikola Jukovic coming on at half time being chucked in a centre back to replace Trevor, I think he did a pretty good job coming in off the bench, Josh. Yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. Like it was uh, a little bit makeshift, a little bit chaotic, but so was the game. I got to say, you know. From a neutral perspective, that last 10 minutes would have been absolutely rollicking entertainment for mm. Friday night MPL football. Uh, I flicked it on and I was, uh, you know, on the edge of my seat, gasping for breath by the end of the game and I wasn't even playing. It was crazy. Yeah, it, was it, good, was, uh, it was just good fun. Obviously, you know, when you've got a vested interest in the game, it's incredibly stressful. But Incredibly, uh, <laughs> incredibly stressful. But what um, an advertisement for MPL football. Just mate. chaos and you know, end to end, both teams going for it, both teams trying to get three points. It was it was great to see. And, you know, no matter the players the Knights had out, the system was the same, the attitude was the same, the application was the same. Yeah. And look, I think that just speaks to the job Steve Verbich and the rest of the coaching staff have done to this point in the season, getting the entire squad ready to ready to go. But again, I think this is now the second time I'm gonna be harping on about a refereeing decision in the last couple of minutes of a game that really you know some people might say draw is probably a fair result in the end. Gully had a few chances they missed. We had a few goals called offside. But for, for the linesman to make a call that the board crossed the line that late in the game, look, mm. you've got to be 100% sure on it. And, from, you know, you've watched the replay a few times. From where I was standing at the game, I was standing pretty close to that goal, sort of in line with it. It didn't look like, to me, but again, look, I'm probably looking at it with Knight's tinted glasses on, but... To me, it really didn't look like it had crossed the line. And for the referee not to call a foul on Trevor, who got absolutely manhandled in the lead-up to the goal, Mm. one thing I will say, the refereeing, I think, this year, by and large, has been pretty good. But what what really sort of frustrates me as a fan, even as a neutral fan watching the highlights from other games, is, you know, normally even... You can sort of tell 10 to 15 minutes into a game what's a foul, what's not. You know, once, if a referee set the standard for the game that if it's going to be a foul in the fifth minute, it's going to be a foul in the 85th minute. You've got to be consistent throughout the game. And I just feel on Friday night there was pretty much every 50-50 call how I was looking at it went Gully's way. Stuff was being called for 10, 15 minutes and then five minutes later someone gets, you know, it's light, it gets called. Ten minutes later it doesn't get called. Mm. For me, for me re- with refereeing, it's got to be consistent throughout the 90 minutes, Josh. Yeah, and look, I think it's a really hard gig, especially at oh, MPL definitely, level. Definitely, You know, you've got the crowd right there on the fence line, on top of you, giving you stick the whole game. The home supporters have a big sway in that regard. You know, it's it's a, t- it's a tough job. Um, but, you know, there have been some shortfalls this season. I, I think when you look at, you know, a club who's, 
talent has dried up, you think what's going with the youth system. Mm. And with the referees, I think we've got to look at the same. Like I, I want to make a broader yeah. point here about the amount of referees that have been lost to the game in yeah. Victoria. I had a referee send me, um, just as by way of example, send me 11 pages of community league football that was unrefereed. They like yeah. had no referees assigned and they were desperately trying to get people onto the games. They've had hundreds of referees abandon the sport um, because they're not given enough support by the federation, because they cop too much abuse, because mm. you know the pay's not good enough, whatever, whatever, For whatever. Reasons. And I, I think there needs to be a real um, action at, at federation level to work out all the reasons why this is happening, what they can do to help more experienced referees stick around and even younger referees so that they can become experienced because I don't know what kind of situation we're going to end up in if uh, the, with football across the state if, you know, like you've got so many referees dropping out and I was talking to this this guy that I know and he said most of the, if in, the issues he's had at like whatever state league level mm. have been because they don't have independent linesmen, you know, that can be yeah. really frustrating. So I, I think if we're not gonna, if we're not going to get the next crop of elite level referees through, and it's the same with players, if there's a talent level yeah, to it, 100%. you know, it, it, you have to get the cream, the cream of the crop to referee these these kinds of matches in MPL and above. And if you don't have the broad pool to select from, and all of those young referees getting experience because they're giving it up after a year or two, the retention rate is horrific. You're not going to have good referees referring yeah. top level games. I look, I spoke to a couple. I was speaking to someone actually last week before the um, before the game, and he's involved with the referees as well. There, in in all respects, COVID hit them in the same way. It's hit a lot of clubs at junior level in terms of players leaving. A few referees now have left the game due to that. There definitely has to be more support from the federation in terms of attracting more referees to the game, so we can get them up to a standard that is better than what it is now. Well, don't don't get me wrong. I'm not having a dig at every referee we've had this year. Mm. But for me, the, the big issue, at the, especially at, at an MPL level, we're talking about the top top level of Victorian football. It it needs to be at a consistent level. And for me at the moment, not that it's not every week, but it's too often when you're looking across the games, there's, there's mistakes that referees at this level should not be making being made. Yeah. I mean, it's it's a tough gig. Can't emphasise that enough. No, nah, definitely not. And with this, you know, this kind of criticism, we try and make it as, as fair and you know not personal or anything uh, no. you know it's it's nothing to do with that it's just wanting the best product and the referee has a huge impact on the game massive so. massive but look again i thought the boys played pretty well on friday night in in all regards you know it, to me it's sort of especially copying a goal that late that controversial it feels a mm. bit like two points dropped but again few few players missing from your first 11 going to gully it's not one of the easiest places to go to in the league um to come away with a point not the worst point you're going to get all year, Josh. No, I think you take it. Uh, given the circumstances, injuries during the game, injuries mm. before the game, uh, they're a good team, Gully, and I think they play better when the other team wants to play football. So yeah, the definitely. Knights are a good matchup for them because it's a it's a game that both teams embrace. If you get teams playing against Gully where it's sort of very negative and anti football, and they sit behind the ball and sit really deep, they struggle a little bit with their possession play. But when you've got you know, both teams pressing, both teams going for it, end-to-end -end stuff, they, their ball players start to shine. And mm. the same thing goes for the Knights, really. Yeah. So it ended up being a really good matchup. But I, I think, you know, Gully will play better against Knights than most teams just because of the stylistic yeah. um, interplay between the two of them. Um, yeah, and I, I, I think, you know, I'd fancy the Knights to, to beat them at home. Uh, this one, you know, just slipped out of the grasp in yeah. the final, final minutes. But... Uh, and we can talk about the refereeing decision all mm. we like, but, you know, they could have easily scored one of the other chances yeah, and looks, then it's a different story. And, and that, that being said, you know, we had a couple of goals, one goal ruled out for offside, one ruled off for a handball that, again, I've watched the footage back, can't for the life of me see where the handball is. It was hardly a poor qual mark anyway. Yeah, well, that was... <laughs> exactly. But again, Alex Salmon missed a one-on-one, -on -one. uncharacteristically for him, he normally buries that. And, you know... Luke Jago's strike was absolutely phenomenal. Like it's all over the comments. Daniel Dragovic, Luke Jago is a guru. Get him in the red, white, and blue. James Baxter, that Jago strike was a banger. But in my opinion, as well as James's, nothing compared to Breeze's effort. Absolute screamer. Mm. We seem to seem to be scoring some absolute peaches this this season. The mm. lighted for Sanchez as well. That's true. You know it's what? In, this year, in comparison to the last couple of years, we've scored some absolute ripping goals, Josh. 
I'm thinking back uh, that uh, free kick from McGarry against Oakley. Obviously, the Alan Webb volley. The Webb volley was phenomenal. Even the old, even Felipe's goal, the the turn and the hit mm. was brilliant. Even round me. one, Albano, like with the Sumeoro assist when he yeah. beat a couple of players and then yeah, found not, the top corner. Not the greatest goal for Albano, but what a run by. S- yeah, Mo to to get him in a position for that tapping. Yeah, there's there's been some really classy ones. The Mikulic header against Avondale. That was that was for me phenomenal, that, absolutely phenomenal. And it, in that point of the season, you know, against against a club like Avondale, especially to to come up that big ninety third minute after you've just mm. conceded, like I still get goosebumps thinking about it. That was an absolutely phenomenal game, wasn't it? Yeah, it was it was a great great game. I really really enjoyed calling that one. Um, and Mo against uh, Hume City as well outside the box. Yeah, it was a th- the last goal in that game. I yes, think. correct, yeah. correct. Great goal as well. Um, but look, I think overall, plenty to take out, plenty of positives to take out of the game. I think mm. the boys gave a very good account of themselves against really a quality midfield. Um, look, Gaz didn't have his greatest game in the middle, but. Yeah, as a result, Giselle next to him, I thought, had one of his probably better games of the year. Yeah, he, he stepped up and, you know, we, we know just how talented the new Giselle is and how he can control games. And that was probably his best performance of the season so far. For, for me as well, I think, yeah. That or maybe the Hume game. Look, the, the Hume game, I think he might have been overshadowed a bit by Gaz because yeah. he was just putting Gaz those was little... Unbelievable, yeah. yeah. Pitches in everywhere, just bouncing back off the grass. But yeah, for me, Jose was good. And Breeze, I think he's, we've seen him now. You know, he's slowly coming back. He played a full half on uh, just about a full half on uh, on Friday night. For me, he was the game changer in the second half. He came on, we scored two. Yeah, I mean, he's got that kind of drive and purpose to his game. He, he plays with a certain urgency, yeah. which is really good, especially in second halves of games when things start to open up a little bit. He really drives into any space that's given in front of him. He's going to make, make late runs into the box. You know, he's he's someone where the fitness has to be 100% for him to play 90 minutes because yeah, the intensity that he plays with, he kind of burns himself out sometimes. So oh, the way he's being used at the moment, I think he's just a function of that. Yeah, look, definitely. And look, him coming back from injury, like you said, Josh, he needs to be at 100% because... You, You've, the Knights fans have seen that the last two weeks. Mm. The energy, the impact he brings in, how he, he's running into the channels, his work rate on and off the ball is absolutely phenomenal. For me, he was one of our better players on Friday night. Yeah, I mean, he didn't start, but he'd be a shout for man of the match. And it's hard to go past the goal he scored as well, So, yeah. which we've talked about at length already. But, you know, that, that's probably... I'm, I'm sure some Knights fans are calling for him to start already. And... You know, he might not be there. You might only have 45 or 60 minutes yeah. in his legs. So. And look, I think, again, at this point of the season, the coaching staff will probably be looking at it as a sort of long, long-term long thing, not get him into the side as quickly as possible because the last thing you want to see now is rush him back and then he misses another four to six weeks. Yeah. This is kind of the point in the season where you start to see the title contenders emerge. These next kind of three or four weeks I yeah. think are absolutely crucial in terms of table positioning. Definitely. But at the same time, it's not a, it's not a sprint. And no, I think we'll see a lot of sides that looked like contenders fall away and a lot of sides that we ruled out, you know, rise at the moment. I think yeah. this is the this is the little part of the season where we, we separate the wheat from the chaff and then it's a matter of uh, endurance for the rest of the campaign. Definitely. It's going to be a very, very interesting three to four weeks coming forward, not just in terms of the league, with the cup football as well being yeah. thrown in now for the teams that are still in it. It's going to be a real test of, of everyone's squad depth, I think, going forward. And we'll come quietly confident in in what the boys have managed to do so far. And mm. I'm I'm going to be backing them in to have a pretty good run over the next three to four weeks. Yeah, I would have thought so. I You know, the, the uh, fixture's coming up. Let's have a, a quick sticky at them because... Oh, we've got Dandy. Dandy You've obviously City. got Dandy on Friday night, which yep. I think is a very winnable game. We've got a double header playing South Melbourne twice in three days. Oh, wow, that's it. The, I forgot about the cup against South. Yeah, Gosh. look, that is coming. Nights fans next forget? week is going to be an absolute bumper show because we've got two two derbies to talk about in the space Ooh. of three days. Gee, that's it's massive. Are we going to just count the aggregate score at the end, or <laughs> <laughs> it looks like a it's like a European Cup tie, mate? It's mass- that's going to be an absolutely massive I mean, week, isn't it? Bentley away, which is well, again look, they've, they've honest, started to play some football yeah, now. Yeah, but look, if I'm honest, that is probably one of my favourite away games of the year. Mm. Kingston Heath, it's a great play. Look, it's overpriced Suva, overpriced Suva, <laughs> which but is, it always goes down a treat though. It goes down good. They cook a good one, unlike at, at South Melbourne where it comes out tasting a bit like a wet cardboard, but. Um, <laughs> Yeah, look, the RSL next door, it's always good for a quick meal before the game and a couple of beers. 
quick slap. Yeah. <laughs> uh, mate, look, yeah, quick slap of the Bricky's laptop if you're that way inclined. But yeah, look, personally, that's that's a that's a favourite of mine in the yeah. season. Always look out for Bentley away. Look, guys, we're going to give a quick run through for the three two ones over the weekend. For the one I've gone, Manos. Yeah. He did concede two, but for me, the second one wasn't really a goal, so we're not going to count that. Um, Again, he came up clutch with a couple of massive saves at 1-0 to keep us in the game. Mm. And I think he's just showing again, look, I predicted at the start of the year he's probably going to save us 12 points. He's probably up to about six already. I like just aesthetically the way he makes saves. It's for some yeah. reason, because maybe he's a bit smaller than some other goalkeepers. He just he springs so much further, though, because yeah. he's got that leap. And it always looks so spectacular look, when he tips I'm, one around the post. I'm almost glad he's a little bit short, because if he was six foot two, there is Buckley's chance would keep him for more than half a season. <laughs> yeah, that's that's pretty much it. You yeah. know, he'd be playing overseas or in the Oh, definitely. Absolutely, definitely. For, uh, the two votes I've gone with Breeze. I yep. thought he was... Well, we've mentioned it already. He was absolutely phenomenal coming on. The goal was outstanding. He scored what should have been the winner on Friday night. Yeah. Um, I just can't wait to see him get proper match fit and get him into a full 90 minutes, Josh. I mean, I can't wait either. And I think it's going to be maybe not this week, but I'm looking at those South Melbourne uh, ties and thinking, Look, I'm he thinking would he's going to start in at least one of them. He would be a wrecking ball to throw in the mix in a cup game or even in the league one. You know that that would be a real curveball to throw at South, who will have been preparing for this one probably since before the draw was made. Yeah, because <laughs> look, I'm, I'm tipping they might have had something to do with the fact that we've drawn them four times in six years. I don't know. Maybe it's just the Federation driving the metrics. We'll see. Oh, look, it, there's something to it. But I don't know whose freezer the envelopes or the balls were in. So, but, uh, oh, look, mate, there's something going on. There's... <laughs> hey, you know, it's good content for us. Look, it's great content for us. And look, at the end of the day, if... If you want to get to that level of the competition, teams like South Melbourne are the teams you need to be beating to get there. So whether you get them in, in the fifth round or the fourth or the sixth round, seventh round, to be honest, I look forward to any game we play against South Melbourne. The fact we've got two in a week is going to be something absolutely special. Absolutely. And the three votes, I've gone with Felipe Sanchez. Yeah. The, uh, Can't for, disagree. Look, mate, for, for a young bloke, one of his first starts of the year... He did not look out of place at all. His goal was phenomenal and probably unlucky not to get another one. I can't speak highly enough of what I saw on Friday night, Josh. Yeah, I mean, he's got everything. He's a tantalising prospect. Mm. Uh, bit of debate going on in which position he's best suited to at this stage of his career. Oh, yeah, well, look, me and um, Mundial Memories, Ante Jukic, <laughs> Had a bit of a chat during the game on Friday night as to what his best starting position is. But look, for me, anywhere in that sort of front third of the pitch, he he's going to be phenomenal. I think on the wing, especially, he's got he's got a bit of pace to burn. He's not the quickest player. Look, he's he's not up there with the likes of maybe an Albano, but he's got plenty of pace. He's technically good enough on the ball to play in that front third of the pitch. He's got a bit of an eye for goal. Great finisher, as we saw on Friday night. He's definitely going to be watch one to watch in the in the coming years if if we can keep him at the Knights, Josh. I think long term, I think he'll end up being a 10. I don't know if he's there yeah. yet physically to play in this division as yeah. a starter at the 10, yeah. maybe off the bench. It's it's a tough one. I'd love to see it. Um, mm. I'm not sure which game you want to be experimenting in though at the moment. And, and it's this, such a this, crucial run of fixtures. This is the problem. It's, you know, he, he probably is technically in terms of the kind of player he's going to end up being, he's probably more suited to that role in the mm. middle where he can have a bit more of an impact on the game. But again, when you've got through that middle section where you've got players like Breeze, Mo, Webb, Albano, you know, Mikulic pushing f to start in that sort of, in the yeah. nine or the 10, he's, it's going to be a pretty tough position on the pitch to break into. I'm, I'm going to bet I don't think he minds. You know, we can debate it all we like. Yeah. Ante can debate it all he likes. <laughs> but uh, I, I think any time, anywhere he can slip into first-team football yeah. is real positive for his at, development. Especially at this point of his career, you know. So he, whatever he, the team needs. Whatever and the he's team so, needs. so look, versatile. Look, he was given an opportunity to, to stake his claim on why he should be there. And on Friday night, I think he proved any... If, if he had any doubters, he definitely proved them wrong on Friday night. All right, guys, we're going to go to a short break. And when we come back, we'll be discussing this week's Friday night fixture against Dandenong City. I'll be joined by Nick Lovan for a quick interview. 
Since 1998, Lanco Group has been providing superior civil engineering solutions and advice to developers, local government and service authorities across Australia. Lanco Group is known for delivering sustainable, efficient solutions. By working closely with clients, Lanco Group is able to meet the complex infrastructure requirements for residential, commercial and industrial developments on time, on budget. Find out more at lancogroup.com.au. Lanco Group, your business partner for engineering solutions. Are you looking to raise money for your community club or charitable organisation? Club Fundraising is an Australian family-run business and we pride ourselves in creating partnerships with clubs, helping build stronger communities. Our free online platform provides everything you need for a successful campaign. With a step-by-step -step interface and best-in-class payment options, Club Fundraising makes it easy for clubs and contributors alike. Revolutionise the way you fundraise. Start your free campaign today. Head to clubfundraising.com.au. That's clubfundraising.com.au. The Night Train is brought to you by St Andrews Hotel, 128 Nicholson Street, Fitzroy. Beautifully crafted, cosy and intimate spaces for your drinking and dining experiences. Show Knights fans now, Josh. It'd be remiss not to mention the um, bit of world football news that sort of took everyone by storm in the last week or so. This mm. attempted European Super League lasted about as long as the South Melbourne A League bit. <laughs> um, the people gathered and they said it's time for this proposal to die. And look, it, that's honestly that's something I can't speak on highly enough. The fact that you know, really, fans from all across Europe, but mainly in England, really took a stand against this sort of idea of a, of a closed league with no promotion, mm. no chance of getting into it, like, and I'm just so so happy for all, all, the, all the respective supporters of the clubs involved that it's not going to be going ahead. Yeah, it's a huge win for, for people power and a rare strike against the kind of modern football commercial apparatus that yeah. uh, seems to rule everything. Uh, the bottom line is, is, is king and uh, these... You know, owners don't give two two stuffs about yeah. uh, any look. of the fans, but uh, it was great to see that they they just chickened out. Like the the level of resolve was so poor. Yeah, <laughs> you know, it was it was hilarious. Uh, it and was, uh, it was one ploy, yeah. absolutely one ploy. <laughs> Who would have thought Chelsea fans being the ones to like really make a stand? I was thinking, you know, yeah, it was that, it was like when you find out Snape was the good guy in Harry Potter. <laughs> <laughs> You know, where, where did this come from? You know, yeah. That, that, look, I'm not going to lie. That took me a bit by surprise. I thought, if anything, it was probably going to be a little poor and Arsenal fans making yeah. a bit, bit more of a push. But good on the Chelsea boys for getting up and putting a stop to it because no good. And look, as uh, as most Knights fans will know, the the feeling of being being told basically you got no chance of coming up into a league. It for me that that sort of hit a bit close to home. You know, this whole idea yeah. of no chance of getting up. You know, I think football's making big strides in, in Australia now with all these talks of the National Second Division and all that sort of stuff. You know, about time we'll be we'll be getting a chance to come back up and around. But great news, Josh. Yeah, and it's also important, I think, to say that with the National Second Division talks ongoing and the spotlight kind of on after this weekend especially, yeah. spotlight on traditional MPL teams in a big way from people who don't like us. Yeah. <laughs> I yeah. think it's the the kind of immaculate presentation to the outside world is absolutely crucial. I mean, everybody knows what happened in MPL New South Wales over yeah. the weekend. Everybody knows that that is so, so damaging to the chances of all these clubs who are trying to lift themselves and create something new and create meritocracy in Australian football where there yeah. hasn't been for the last 16 years, yeah, look, plus definitely. whatever they call and promotion and relegation in the NSL, which was very complicated yeah. and not very consistently applied. Nah, but And I think as any any so Australian soccer fans know, the media here take all of about 2.6 seconds to any chance they can to rag on, on the world game, to the game we all love. So 
you know, this is over the next couple of years, especially it's a mm. big thing. We just need to really be united in it in terms of our push for this national second division. Yeah, but and I think you know it goes without saying, and I wasn't expecting any of that sort of mm. behaviour from Knights fans. We haven't, mm. you know, they've been fantastic this season. Oh look, you know. really over the last last little last wall, actually, I think yeah. the overall the the behaviour of mo- most sort of supporters in in MPL Victoria has been exemplary over the last few years, especially. Yeah, I I'm, and you know a lot of clubs have made a lot of strides. Yeah. Um, you know, Preston on the weekend. I did a Preston North Sunshine game. It was. Not Preston's call to not have North Sunshine away fans there. Yeah, it there. was North Sunshine. Made yeah, it was North Sunshine's call. Preston were happy to accommodate. And, uh, you know, they've got a supporter marshal there who deals with any, you know, issues or offensive chance or whatever. It's, mm. it's good. And, you know, the occasions like the, the FFA Cup game against Oakley coming up will be a good way to show everybody how far we've come. And then you get incidents like that in New South Wales over the weekend that looks like back in the Stone Age. And, yeah. you know, it's going to be replayed and repeated on Nine News and Channel 7... Yeah. Forever, and that old and rock spot, Alan Jones is going to take every dig at it. Yeah, he exactly. Can. They'll they'll take every opportunity. So now, now more than ever, is the time to to show everybody how great MPL football can be, how strong these traditional clubs are with their passionate support, and um, you know how welcoming an environment it can be. You know, I can vouch for that as somebody who's not from any of these communities. It's the mm. shows that I host on FNR, but I've been welcomed with open arms, and I, I hope you know everybody can can take the same lesson from that as well and yep. not, not be deterred by very isolated incidents. Exactly right. Now, we'll be being joined by Nick Glovan shortly, but we'll just have a quick little run on the game this Friday. Massive game for us this Friday night, Josh. Yeah, huge, huge. Oh, you mentioned the South Melbourne A-League bid. Mm. I actually did see... Uh, Roberto Carlos's agent in the news again this week. Oh, the the alleged South Melbourne coach. Yeah. Yes, the, uh, the but his his agent, the uh, the notorious Morris Pags, trying to bring Walter Zenga to Melbourne Victory, which lasted about as long as the Super League as well. It's just good fun. <laughs> yeah, absolute and shambles. Yeah, it's an absolute yeah, it's shambles. Good, isn't good it? fun, good fun. Hopefully, hopefully they've uh, they've matured since then. I'm not sure. We'll see. I doubt it. I <laughs> highly, highly doubt it. All right. Well, I, I think we've just about. Got uh, got Nick Glove on, ready to go. Uh, Nick, have we got you there? Yeah, you got me. How are you, boys? Not bad, Nicky boy. How are you, mate? Oh, yeah, can't complain. Just finished a big session. Pretty tired, but see how we go. That's it, mate. Uh, look, we've had a few. We've done a few of these live crosses to the stadium. This is the first time we've we've had the player shouted out on the comments. Daniel Dragovic is an absolutely <laughs> massive fan of you, mate. Daniel Dragovic, he's the best that bloke. My biggest fan, I reckon. <laughs> he loves you. All right, mate, so just give us a quick run through. What were your thoughts from the game on Friday? The game on Friday, um, it was a bit, uh, I don't even know where to start. I guess the first half, we weren't at our best, I thought. Probably deserves to be down, but I thought our reaction in the second half was very good. Got 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 up in the game, and then in the end, it sort of felt like two points loss. But maybe by the course of the game, probably a draw might have been a fair result, but sort of the way it went down, it sort of felt like two points lost at the end of the day. Yeah, mate. Look, it's the we seem to love a bit of late drama. Last couple of we weeks do. have definitely not not been good for the hair colour of many of our supporters. <laughs> um, but just personally, for me, this is probably one of the better seasons you've had at the Knights. What's it been like coming back to the club? And you've been on a bit of a tear this year, mate. Oh, coming back's been good. Um, I guess last year was pretty interrupted for everyone. I guess with COVID and stuff. But I guess this has probably been my my first proper year back since I did my knee. So I guess it's, I'm finally back to full fitness, I guess. And um, on a personal note, yeah, it's good. And I guess Beb's coming in here. It's more of like a professional environment around here now. So the whole team's doing well. And yeah, hopefully just keep kicking on and um, play finals football this year. It's been a while since we've played finals. So hopefully get there. Nick, it's Josh here, mate. Uh, the improvement in your game this season has been uh, really, really striking. What do you put that down to? Um, I'll probably put that down to I did a bit of like a lot of hard work in the off season, obviously coming back from my knee injury and stuff. So I guess in the off season I did did a bit extra to get fit. I guess even the COVID break was probably a positive thing because I could probably do the right rehab and all that stuff to get where I had to be. So I think I'm probably finally back to that level I was kind of at um, in my first stint at nights or even when I was at Bentley. So I think I'm finally back to that level now and. Yeah, I'll probably just credit that to a bigger off-season, more string conditioning work and stuff, and um, 
just taking it more like professionally than I had before, I guess. Oh, look, mate, you've been a joy to watch this year. I think your game last week against Altona was absolutely cracker. Probably unlucky not to score. You had a pretty good dig from outside the box in the game. <laughs> That'd um, be a first. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, what's what's sort of the biggest difference for you? Like obviously this is your second stint at the club between between this time, this go around and and previous seasons. Um, probably the biggest. I think it's just a lot more professional. Sort of the way the coaching staff, the strength and conditioning staff. Like we're probably taking it. Like I guess NPL has always been semi professional, but now this is probably the year we've been closer to being more of a professional. We're training more. We're in the gym more. We're doing video analysis more. I guess just everything's more taken more professional than it had been in previous years, I'd say. And then got a good squad on paper. And, um, yeah, I'd say that'd be the biggest difference. Do you put that down to, to Steve Bebich's influence? Yeah, massively. I reckon Bebich has come in and um, really put in, like, we play to a, a real specific structure that he likes us to play to. He's very, um, like, specific with what he wants. And, yeah, I'd say just the professionalism around the around the squad and the teams at an all-time high from when I've been in the club anyway. So you're obviously a very versatile player. Do you feel like you're playing in your best position now? Um, I don't know. I'd probably fancy myself a bit further than Park, as anyone would. But um, <laughs> I don't know. I, I guess I've always been a centre midfielder. So if I was to throw, if I was thrown into the centre midfielder, I reckon I could do a job there. But I'm happy wherever Bebs wants me so I can do a job at right back, centre mid. It, it is what it is, I guess. Oh, look, mate, maybe we'll have a word. We'll get you and Josie swap for the coming week, mate. <laughs> I wouldn't mind that. I'll get, I'll get on the score sheet, I reckon, you know. <laughs> oh, look, mate, you guys have been a joy to watch so far this year. Um, come, this game coming up this week against Andy, a bit of a Croatian derby. How's everyone in the change room feeling coming into this week's fixture? Um, it's probably a bit of a danger game, to be honest, with how Dandy is sitting on the ladder, and especially the, um, the transfer window opens up on Tuesday or tomorrow, so I guess I'll have a few new, new faces out there. But um, it's easy to get complacent against Dandy because of where they're sitting on the ladder. But I don't think, I don't think their ladder position sort of shows how they've been playing recently. I think they've been doing well lately. Um, and I guess they're like a sort of a sister club sort of thing. So there's no, no like, no uh, hard feelings there. But definitely need to get the job done, regardless of if they're a sister club, or whatever. Got to get the three points. They're massive, massive three points for us and where we are in the ladder. So we've got to kick on into that sort of top four sort of spot. But. Yeah, definitely a danger game, but definitely a game I feel that we uh, can be winning and should be winning. What did you take from, you know, that chaotic last 10 minutes against Green Gully? You, you won the game and drew the game, and it was, uh, you know, obviously very stressful for the likes of Zovac over here. A um, bit of refereeing <laughs> controversy as well. But, uh, you know, what did Steve Babich have to say about kind of managing those those situations? Um, well, yeah, it was, well, the last 10 minutes of the game was real stretched, like for both teams, I guess there was chances like for them, for us, it could have gone either way. When, it, when we got that goal, I thought that we were home and hosed, but um, I guess we probably, probably could have been a bit more compact in those last three, four minutes and maybe, you know, seen if we could have stopped conceding that late one. Um, but I guess that's just a learning curve for us. So the next, I'd, I highly doubt the next time we get a late one that we'll concede like that. So I guess it's a, a learning curve for us and we can only um, improve on it for next time. Well, your, be your biggest fan, Daniel Dragovic, has come through in the comments again. He <laughs> says... Uh, I want Glavan versus Topper, Steve, Stephen Topalovic, who was also watching. One-on-one uh, -on -one in the middle of the park, do it for the people. Would you fancy yourself in a 1v1 duel with yeah, Topalovic? Who's coming out on top there, mate? Oh, I would definitely fancy myself against Topalovic. <laughs> I don't know. He's got, a, he's got a reputation as a bit of a hard man, but I reckon he's, uh, he's soft as butter when you get to know him. So <laughs> see what happens on Friday night. Well, he's got to protect that nose, right? The modelling gigs, you know, <laughs> they don't come easy. Yeah, I don't even know how he's got those gigs, to be honest. But uh, <laughs> I'll fancy myself in the modelling world against him as well. <laughs> oh, look, we love to see it, mate. We love the confidence. Look, hopefully hopefully you do get, get a one-on-one -on, -one on him. Uh, we'll, the fans are definitely going to be watching for it now. It's gonna yeah, be... I can't wait. I can't wait. I'll make sure he meets me in uh, the middle of the park. <laughs> oh, look, mate, it's been an absolute pleasure having you on the show. Look forward to seeing you, on, seeing you and the boys in action on Friday night, mate, and best of luck to all these. Yeah, sounds good. Hopefully we can uh, get the three points and keep going from here. Oh, look, mate, I'm sure all the nice fans are behind you in that regard. Thanks for your time, Nick. No worries. Pleasure, boys. Thanks, mate. Nick Lovon. Nick Lovon. fun. Seems to be a fan favourite based on the comments tonight. Yeah, absolutely. And why wouldn't he be? Look, you know. well, I mentioned it on last week's show. I think he's been one of our probably standout performers this year. 
it just in terms of his consistency, the level he's playing up to, I think he's massive. And I think he's going to be a big player for us on Friday night, especially in terms of, you know, Dandy's front three seem to, especially early in games, seem, seem to click. He's going to be a big part of shutting that down in the wide, in that wide area, stopping balls coming into Delich, who is a bit of a threat in the air. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, he's going to be worded up on, on Delich and whoever mm. else plays in those wide roles. You know, Delano Ferro tends to play down the right most of the time, but uh, he can switch over as well and he's very, very pacey and, and dangerous. Been probably Dandy City's best player this season. Mm. And so their, their strengths come in their wide areas and that's, you know, something Knights got to be aware of. That plays into how far you push the fullbacks up in support of the attack uh, whether both go at the same time or just one. You know, all this stuff is, I'm sure, going to be go, going over in detail uh, later on this week with uh, Steve Bevich, but it's going to be a fascinating uh, tactical battle. Yeah, definitely. And I think it's going to be a, a really good spectacle. Well, look, even for the neutral fans, I mean, if you want to come and see a spectacle, the away bench isn't too far from the crowd. Sitting behind Sasha for a game would be absolutely magical to watch. He's box office, Sasha. Yeah, He's always got definitely. something to say. I reckon there's 30, 40 people that come to a game just to sort of... <laughs> Especially a dandy, it's a, you're sitting a bit bit away from the benches. Or you can hear him pretty He's, clearly. Well, the the actual commentary position is right above the benches at Frank mm. Olihan, and uh, we were considering lowering Mike down, just trying to catch what he was saying. Might, might not have been fit for broadcast some no, of de- it. Definitely not. I think that um, you better have the dump button ready to go. <laughs> he shouts himself hoarse every game. <laughs> you know, it's just. Oh uh, look, mate, I've been there. Yeah. I, know, I know. I know the feeling. But look, absolutely massive game for us on Friday night. Um, for me, it's a must-win in terms of where we want to be. You know, if we want to be playing Fondles football, this is mm. a, you know, you need to be taking, especially at home, you've got to be taking the three points here. I'm backing us in for a for a 3-1 win. Yeah, I like it. I reckon I was going to say 2-0, so mm. I've got the same margin. Uh, but, you know, Dandy City have been inconsistent going forward this season. Uh, if you don't allow them transition opportunities, I think mm. you can you can stifle them, and that's going to be the the main danger is you know a big pitch uh, at Summer Street, trying to prevent those balls into those channels and and the wingers yeah. running onto them and hurting you in behind. That's that's the big threat, I would say. I don't really know who's going to start up front for Dandy City. I never do. You know they've no. got an inconsistent scenario there. I don't even know if Brad Mann's still around. They yeah, might have been well, him look, off. I think that's De- Delich coming in sort of shores yeah. that up for them. Yeah, I don't know whether he'll play wide on the left or whether yeah. he'll play through the middle. You got Shahav Ditch. He's kind of more of a technical back to goal mm. type player. They've got different options and they haven't settled on a consistent no. lineup. So that's Definitely one other not. complication in trying to prepare for them. Uh, but I say their other big strength is the centre back partnership. We were talking about Topper before, mm. um, and giving him a bit of a hard time. But he's a good player, and <laughs> no, he's got a great player. A, a bit of you know silk about him. He can go on a run with the ball. He doesn't mind um, you know taking responsibility on it. And then there's uh, the genuine hard man Nathan Cook next to him. Who, yeah, well that's uh, right. <laughs> he's uh, missing teeth, and you probably will be too by the end of the game. <laughs> you know, he actually is. He, he takes his false teeth out for games. Oh, no I, way. Well, that's that's that. what, you know, somebody from Preston told me. Maybe they were fibbing. But, uh, NPL rumour mill. <laughs> going warm. Yeah, well, we'll see if we can get Topper to confirm that in the comments if he's still watching. <laughs> uh, but he's uh, he's genuinely, uh, you know, very physically imposing and, and tough centre half who's you know, born and raised in Scunthorpe. So that's, yeah. uh, that's what you get. <laughs> yeah, it's a tough area. Uh, look, I think it's going to be a tough hitter for us. And this is... You know, with, Tre- with Trevor, look, he's back training tonight, but maybe a bit of a selection quandary for Bebic in terms of who starts next to Bryce at centre-back. I think the back four is going to be absolutely vital this week. And, look, I think where the game's going to be won and lost is going to be through the middle of the, middle of the park. Juzza was good on Friday night. Hopefully he can have a repeat performance this Friday at home. But, again, it's just going to be a matter of take, taking chances when they come up. Dandy is a solid defensive unit. At that, mm. Across that back four. Yeah, Sasha's a centre back. You know, he's had a coach defence. Yeah, correct. So Plans. it's it's going to be absolutely vital that when those couple of chances pop up, which which I'm tipping they will, because we've been looking absolutely terrifying going forward. Um, the boys have just got to stand up and, and take chances when they come. And look, something I've noticed over the last few weeks, the boys seem a bit hesitant to take a dig from outside the box. Mm. Like if you get half a yard, a yard of space, like. Give it a bash, mate. Especially with all the bangers who scored this yeah. season. I mean, like, just give give it a crack, mate. Like, stop doing a bit of a dance on top of the ball trying to walk it in. Like, we want to see screamers. Yeah, that's what the fans want. We don't want to be waiting for the women's team to knock the cobwebs <laughs> out of the top corner. Come on, boys. Like, I wouldn't mind seeing someone just roll one forward and reminiscent of Ronaldo against Porto, just absolutely <laughs> blitz one in. <laughs> 
I, I remember that goal. I, I watched that live, woke my entire family up. Oh, you weren't <laughs> the only one, mate. We're up at my Coolum's house up in Bright and the noise of, uh, what, 3.34 in the morning was not pretty to anyone. Yeah. The old couple next door weren't too happy, but <laughs> that's a story for another day. <laughs> as long as it wasn't any cardiac issues. Uh, no, nah, th- <laughs> thankfully no, thankfully no. <laughs> but uh, that's that's what we want to see. You know, there's, there's going to be opportunities as well because Danny, Danny liked to sit in a little bit. Yeah, definitely. And, you know, they, they've got their kind of banks of four. Uh, they'll sit on the edge of the box. Sometimes you've got to have a dig. And mm. even just to, to tempt them out the next time, yeah, well, doesn't right. necessarily have to go in. Uh, you've got to mix it up. Uh, look, guys, that's going to be a wrap for the show tonight. Um, no one called in for the competition prize. We didn't oh. get no one on the oh, text I'll, line. Uh, I'll, uh, I'll refresh the text line, see refresh if we've got anybody. Line, see if we've got someone in coming oh, in. Oh, hello, we did. We, we did? did. I just didn't... Uh, We've got a few texts coming in. Uh, so if someone said, Green Gully stopped us in the first half, but if you're fair, they missed plenty of chances too. Some good teams are going to miss out on the finals this season. I think that's very true. Oh, I think Deep that's very, competition. very accurate. Um, and I don't know. Oh, yes, I think it is. Uh, all right. The correct score was 2-0 in both games to the visitors in each. 2-0 Knights in round five and 2-0 Dandy City in round 18. Bang, bang, bang. We have a winner. Yep. So we've got a number there to call. Oh, we've got a number. We'll be back in touch with you. You can collect your prize on Friday night. $50 merch voucher. You can, as we said before, you can see some behind us. We've got the best merch in the comp. Best merch in Victoria, I'd argue, and possibly best merch in Australia. I reckon we'd give a few of these A-League clubs a bit of a run for their money, mate. Yeah, it's it's either you guys or Hamilton at Zuri, I think. <laughs> the, the, the big two. Yeah, it's an MPL club and a state league three team from Look, you, northern you know New South Wales. <laughs> <laughs> the, boy, the boys at the club who organise that sort of stuff do an absolutely phenomenal job. We look forward to seeing you all at the ground on Friday night. Uh, thanks, Josh, again for co-hosting. Thank you to Tony and the team at St Andrews for jumping on as sponsor. Nick Lovan for joining us, fan favourite. Daniel Dragovic for absolutely hammering the Facebook Live comments. And the winner of the prize who we'll get back in touch with. Hopefully see you all at the club on Friday night. Hopefully the weather's not too, too cold. Mm. But regardless... There's plenty of merch. Come down and buy a jacket. Keep yourself warm. It's going to be an absolutely bumper game. Should be a bumper crowd for an absolutely brilliant game of football, Josh. See you at Summer Street. See you at Summer Street. I think the Knights, their time has arrived. I think last week, the 10-man performance in the preliminary final was absolutely exceptional. So I'm going for the Knights. Talk of Knights, it's a real fighting team. Buscock into the back of the net. Melbourne Knights take the lead. 1-0. Melbourne Knights will win the Doherty Cup. Croatia looking for a finals burst. That's it. The Croatia fans salute the goal. That could be so vital.